hope you've all had a really beautiful weekend. Um, um, I've had a really wet one, <laughs> to be honest. The weather here in the UK, if you're in the UK, please do give me a wave and let me know if it stopped raining where you are today. Today, it has actually stopped raining. I've been for a walk today. I've been to net walking, which is where you go walking and networking at the same time. Anybody else who's a business owner ever done that? Done the net walking, net, net, net walking thing, the walking um, while networking. Um, so, yeah, many trips, Jane, I've had in the motorhome recently. We've been away again this weekend. We've been to the East Coast in the UK where it was equally wet as it's been here. <laughs> just, there's just been so much rain. Um, always have a lovely time, though, when I'm in the motorhome. It doesn't really matter so much what the weather's like. And I think that's one of the beautiful bonuses of this three principles understanding is that I... I don't get so bothered about things like the weather, that it can be, you know, it's sunny now. It's been a beautiful day today, actually. But it can be signing it down with rain two days solid, which it was uh, this weekend. And I can still have a really good experience. I remember noticing on Saturday when we kind of knew it was going to be one of those days when it <laughs> didn't really stop raining. Um, but noticing how... I noticed some thinking around, oh, that's a long stretch. What are we going to do? <laughs> we're going to go with being trapped inside the motorhome. With the lovely Bruce, of course, but, you know, trapped inside the motorhome. And will, will I be OK? And all that kind of thing. And it's really interesting to see how, you know, you can. You can be absolutely fine, despite you being um, caught up in you know, in, in the rain and stuck in stuck in a motorhome, which is not a very big space. It is seven metres long, but that's not very big, really, for a vehicle to spend your whole day in. But it was fine. So please do say hi. Thank you so much to Jane for saying hello in the comments. And I can see Marie just said hi too. Um, you've been a while. Here in the Netherlands, the weather has also not been very summer. Yes. And a lot of rain and thunder. I think you do generally have similar weather to us. but I, I kind of can really be in a place of gratitude because I know that in some parts of Southern Europe, the weather is the other extreme and they, you know, people's lives are in danger. So, you know, we can moan, can't we, about our bit of rain and thunder and not being able to go out as much because it's wet, but relatively safe, I think, compared to what's happening to some people. So, you know, we probably in, in the northern part of Europe probably all think we'd rather have the weather that having in the south of Europe, but actually maybe not because they're having fires and all sorts of things. It's not very good. And of course, people from the UK, probably the same as the Netherlands, go on holiday to the southern parts of Europe to get a bit of sun. But, you know, um, yeah, better for nature too. You're right, Marie, because of course, great big swathes of nature are being destroyed in these fires but let's not get too caught up in that today. So today we're going to be looking at um, innovation um, from a three principles perspective, which is a really fun subject to explore. So a little introduction about me. Um, I know I've got some familiar faces because I can see them bobbing around at the bottom. So hello, all of you that have been here before. If you are a repeat offender, because we like to call people who keep coming back to these sessions, please do say hello and let me know that you're there. Um, and if you're a newbie, let me know too if you've not been to one of my sessions before and you don't know what all this uh, fuss is about the three principles, then please do pop in the comments and say hello. So um, I'm, I'm Claire Downham. I'm known as the Queen of Karma and I'm a teacher here on Insight Timer and some other places a little bit, but I really do like it on here and spend more of my time here than I do on any other platform. And I call myself a human potential catalyst which means that I help people to, particularly people who've been trying for a long time to fix themselves, to reveal the, their amazing potential, because I really do believe that every single one of us has infinite potential, and it's going to be great fun to explore that in this session on innovation today, and that it, it gets covered up, um, because you may have noticed you've got this voice in your head that often leads you astray shall we say and into places that are not particularly helpful for you in terms of reaching your potential 
So hello Wendy, you missed last week. Well, I'm glad you're here again this week. Um, last week's was actually screen recorded. I, I think that's one that's been uploaded and is available for you to, um, to, to listen to on my YouTube channel. So if you go to the link in my bio on Insight Time, you can find, find a, um, a playlist there where you can listen to ones that you might have missed. And the other thing that I've started doing is I've started to make some recordings with the same title as the lives. So it's almost like a little mini snapshot version of the kind of things I've explored in the live sessions. Um, obviously less of the interaction with the comments and that kind of thing. So it, it tends to be a bit shorter anyway, less of the introducing me and all that kind of stuff. So, so I can do these kind of 15 minute sessions and you can get hold of those on the platform. So they do come, um, they do go live every so often when Insight Time approves them. So if you follow me, that's the best way to see when these tracks are getting released and getting approved. So Lashandria, what a beautiful name that is. I love that. From North Little Rock in Arkansas. Um, and good morning to you too. It's good afternoon for me because I'm in the UK. That's where I'm based. And I'm based here in my home in Leeds and also sometimes in Trevor the Motor Home. So sometimes when you catch me on these sessions, you will catch me. Um, in Trevor the Motorhome, pottering around the UK at the moment, but hopefully one day I'll be pottering around Europe, um, probably Spain to start with, because I do like a bit of Spain. I love the food and I do like the song also, <laughs> of course. So, um, and the Spanish people who I love. I don't think I've got any people in Spain on the call today. It'd be interesting to hear from you. So, that's a bit about me in terms of um, being a human potential catalyst and what I help people. A lot of the people I work with are feeling anxious, stressed out, overwhelmed. Um, they are generally female business owners and professional women or post-professional women. I work with retired ladies quite a bit as well, which is great fun. So um, I teach something called the three principles. If you've not come across the three principles, they are thought, consciousness and mind. And I'm not going to go into that too much detail because I usually talk about the implications of the three principles. So today we're going to explore innovation, but we're going to do that from a three principles perspective. So you'll see where I'm pointing to as I talk about this. If you want to find out more about the three principles, go to my bio and look for a track called What Are the Three Principles and Why Do They Bring More Ease to Life? That's a really good starter. But also all of my other content points in that direction. And there's also some stuff on my link in bio, which gives you a little bit more about me and a little bit more about the three principles. So that's definitely worth looking at, too. Um, what else was I going to say? So each month when I'm on it, teaching on Insight Time, I have a little strategy now when it involves exploring a particular theme. And this the, this month, we're exploring all the aspects of productivity and a subject close to my heart, because that was my self-development mission was to make myself more productive. So we are going to, we're exploring that this month of July. And every time I have a new theme, I have a new course. So we've got the course about productivity is called Stress of Success, a three principles approach to effortless productivity. And that's available on my profile too. So do go have a look at that and have a look at the other two courses too, Calm, Balance and Clarity with Ease and Revealing Your Full Potential with the Three Principles. Both those courses, uh, all three of those courses are available if you check out my, my um, profile and see what's available there. They're all coming from a three principles perspective. You'll find there's quite a lot of repetition and going over things, but that's how we get the depth. So with the three principles, it's very simple. It's about these three principles. It's very simple. We're not looking for breadth. We're looking for depth. The deeper you understand the three principles, the more you listen to this type of content, the deeper you go, the more you have a nicer experience of life. And I really am on a mission to share these three principles so that more people can have a nice experience of life. So if you are able to support me with that, then I'm really grateful if you can make a donation today um, to support me with spreading the word of the three principles, especially if you find this content helpful and you notice you yourself having an insight, having a nicer experience of life as a result of listening to this. So hopefully that's the introduction. As I say, this month it's productivity and there's a live every day this week. I've managed to shoehorn them in this week because I, I just love turning up here and doing the lives. 
so I'm keen to try and do them as much as possible. So I hope you do join me um, as I explore this on, on a daily basis. All sorts of different times, which means they won't suit everybody, but hopefully there, are, there, are, there is a couple at the time zone that works for you. Um, um, so as I say, this month is positivity. Next month, we're going to look at relationships. And I do think that I mean, I could probably do like two months worth on relationships. Maybe I will. Let's see, see what happens, because I think relationships are absolutely transformed by this understanding. And that's been my personal experience, not only with the relationships of the people who are close to me, just having a completely different experience of them, which is wonderful and more love, more connection, more laughter and more joy in those relationships. But especially the relationships that I found more difficult, the ones that seem to be causing me a problem, don't seem to be bothering me so much anymore. So that's really exciting to see. So next month relationships just started. I think I've done up to lesson seven of the course this morning. I've been recording that. So that will be going hopefully for submission to Insight Timer tomorrow, which means it'll be out next week just as we start our unit on relationships. So I look forward to seeing some of you on that too. So let's let's look at innovation today from a three principles perspective. And this is where, you know, often when I talk about thought, which I do a lot, it often comes tainted a little bit with thought is the thing that often gets us, takes us away from this innate well-being takes us away from calm, takes us away from having a nicer experience of life. And so sometimes I feel like thought gets a really bad rap in the three principles because, you know, we, we talk in the three principles about how we're feeling our thinking, that our thinking is a reflection of our feelings, that, that when we experience thought it we experience it in our heads we experience thought as a picture or words or whatever we experience but we also experience it in our bodies and our body is letting us know about our state of mind it's letting us know how helpful our thinking is and so thought can um really get get a bad rap from that point of view that we can see that well we learned to think some not very helpful things when we were younger and now we're carrying that through life as this habitual kind of problematic thinking that's the way it can end up seeming but the other thing to know about thought and here you know there's a difference between thought with a little t which is almost like our thinking our personal thinking the thinking that tends to you know that we tend to experience and that tends to create those awful feelings and nice feelings too of course and, and big thought, big T, thought with a big T, which is our capital T, big T. <laughs> Sounds like I'm teaching reception again, doesn't it? Um, that that is amazing. Like that's, if we can see that that is the creative force of the universe coming alive through human beings and innovation is that innovation is when we as human beings connect to our wisdom connect to the power of the universe we connect to universal intelligence and things come to life through us and isn't it amazing when you sit back and think about it what human beings have created both both for good and for not so good. I'm not going to use the word evil. I don't really believe in that. But, but you know, human beings have created so many wonderful things and have also created a bit of a, a problem <laughs> in the world. But all of that is this amazing power of thought. And what's really useful, you know, we'll explore innovation a little bit more in a moment, but what's really useful in terms of our own well-being on a day-to-day -day basis to, is to see that sometimes we will get caught up in that amazing force, that amazing power, and we'll have uncomfortable feelings and we'll be lost in it for a while. 
but that that's okay when you realize that of course you're talking about one of the most powerful forces in the universe of course it it looks true of course it creates uncomfortable feelings of course sometimes we get lost in it that's just part of life and it's okay it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you it doesn't mean you're a problem it doesn't mean you need to go and pathologize your experience it just means that you are being impacted on by the most powerful force in the universe because it is that force that creates all these wonderful amazing things in the world so a really fun example is that this morning I went to my I went to a networking event that's where you do networking and walking at the same time find something that does if you're a business owner find a networking group group near you because it is really good fun it's just a much more chilled way to talk to people so we stopped for a coffee in the cafe in the park where we'd been walking and I got chatting to this guy who I've known for a while through through business networking and stuff and we got chatting about chat GPT which is one of these if you've not come across it it's one of these AI tools that is well it's amazing <laughs> it's absolutely amazing and it's fun and it's helpful I use it a lot for my marketing I chat to it about you know, what might be things that are useful to talk about, what, you know, what are a certain group struggling with, or I could ask it all sorts of questions. And it's, it's up to date till about 2021. So in terms of talking about how people are feeling and things like that, it's really quite helpful. So we got really engrossed in talking about that. And then he was telling me about Bing and he was telling me about other, uh, one, one of the something, I can't remember what it's called now, there's something that creates pictures. So you can say, can you create me an image of something that, you know, looks like this and is a cartoon form of that or whatever. You can get it to create all sorts of images. They're not all perfect, um, but they are, um, they're, they're, you know, you can, you can keep talking to it and get it to change the image until the image is something that you really want. Now, isn't that amazing that that has, you know, something like, you know, artificial intelligence has been created by human beings? Like the mind that can even, could have even contemplated something like that, something as innovative as, as that, you know, a, a, a a machine thing, a machine intelligence that you can have a conversation with and discuss things with. Um, to help, you know, I find it just helps me to, you know, when you work on your own, it's good to have somebody, you can, not someone, but something you can just bash out ideas around with. Um, and it's really helpful for that. And, you know, that's just one thing. Chat GPT is just one thing. You know, look at the strides we've made in terms of disease management and cancer cures and you know all the things that now mean that we as human beings can have a nicer physical experience of life you know look at the innovation in vehicles and all those kind of things it's absolutely everywhere now you may be sitting there thinking yeah but what about me what, what what's my role in this innovation in life what what am I supposed to be doing and how do I release that from within me how, how do I innovate how do I create in the world something different and new and that has the potential to help people well I would say that you will be doing that all the time you will be solving problems and coming up with ideas and um, making decisions and taking the next step that might be in a new direction all day, every day, because that's all innovation really is, isn't it? It's just going in a new direction that hasn't been gone in before. And your ability to do that is yet another one of these innate traits that I talk about. So, again, I've done this a lot in this unit on productivity, more than I ever thought was going to. I've been pointing to 
little children and and you might go well little children are innovating but they are so you give a little child a four or five i'm going to say four or five because i'm going to talk about lego bricks and you probably wouldn't give them to a child much younger than that because you tend to put them in the mouth and choke <laughs> so, you know let's say you give a pile of lego bricks to a four-year-old and they will innovate unless you sit with them and make them go through the instructions that have been provided for whatever model if you just give them the lego bricks they will create something that's never been created before something completely new now here's something that will make you laugh i hope it'll make you laugh anyway because i am a woman who likes symmetry and um and my daughter and i we both have this nitpickety thing about symmetry um you know those cars that have got like a the number plate is off center that makes my head go screwy does anybody else have this problem or is it just me so if 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 i'm giving a pile of lego bricks to a child i'm going to be like no no you have to have a red one at either side and then a blue and it's all got to look symmetrical you've got to have a whole layer of red at the bottom of your house and then you can have a layer of blue and then a layer of each but it's all got to like look the door's got to be in the middle and it's got to be two windows if we're building a house for example car will be the same it's all got to be color wise and brick wise it's got to be it's got to be symmetrical now as i'm telling you that it's coming to mind as a beautiful metaphor because I, you know, really, when you give that child a pile of Lego bricks, if you sit there and I'd have to sit on my hands and watch them making a non-symmetrical item. But, you know, I, if I just leave them to it, the child is just going to make something brand new that's never been created before. They're going to innovate. And if I said to, to the child, well, here's a problem. I want the car to fit in this garage. that's already been built, for example. The child would the child would work out a way to make a car that fit through that garage door. And, you know, they would take bricks off, add them on, you know, make it narrower, make it longer and thinner, whatever. They would do that until they got to the point where they had created an, an innovation, a car that fitted in the garage that I provided. Now, if I sit there and say to that child, no, 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 you can't do it like that. It's got to be symmetrical. You need to make it symmetrical. Don't put, no, don't put that yellow brick there. That's got to be a green brick because you've got a green, green brick at the other side. If I sat there over that child the whole time saying, no, don't do that, do it like that, do it, do it, do it, do it. Eventually, and probably not after a very long time at all, the child will probably give up. They'll probably just give up and go, I'm not doing that anymore. I can't get this right. There's no right way. It's impossible. Because the child's innovative spirit is there and it's like working it all out and creating and making and fixing. And yeah, it's got to fit in this garage space, but otherwise I can kind of do it however I want. I can make it just fit into the garage space or fit very easily into the garage space. It doesn't really matter. The child will be creating from that place. But if I'm there going, no, that's wrong. That's not right. That's not, yeah, don't do it like that. That's not symmetrical. The child will cease to be in that space of innovation. Now I'm seeing the hearts go up at the side of the screen, which makes me think that you're hearing what I'm saying here. That innovative spirit, I feel quite emotional when I talk about what's inside us, is there already inside every single one of us it's pure it's whole it's it's it exists it's our connection to the universal intelligence because the universal intelligence wants things to come to life to us and then there's our thinking squashing it down and our thinking is very much like that voice, my voice telling that child they're doing it wrong. You can't do it that way. That won't work. That's not the right way. Nobody's done it like that before. So why the heck do you think you can? The voice of imposter syndrome, the voice of the inner critic. That voice is there. And that's what we hear. 
So when I say to you that you are innovating all day, every day, what I am saying is that that is trying to come through you. It's coming through you. It's bubbling up inside you. And that our thinking is squashing it down, stopping it from coming into existence. And I'm sure, and I'd love to hear from you in the comments if you've experienced this, that you're experiencing this too. That you've seen your innovative ideas bubble up and come to light and then just be squashed down by that voice or by an anxious feeling or by a sense that it's never going to work and you can't do that because who the heck do you think you are? So that, that metaphor that just has literally emerged, aren't you lucky you're the first ones to hear it? <laughs> It is, is just so perfect for this concept that I'm talking about here. You know, if I stand over that child telling them they're doing it wrong, they'll just give up. But you've got a voice in your head telling you you're doing it wrong. And sometimes it's causing you to give up. It's causing you to stop. Now, Oh, I'm just going to pause there before I go on because I just love what Wendy said. So, Wendy, you've watched your super excited new high school student go through the frustrations of operating within the box. Yeah, I mean, it's not just a box that's inside our head, is it? There's so much out there that says you can't do it that way and you can't live life that way and you're supposed to know what you're going to do with your life. I'm I'm watching uh, Sweet Magnolias at the moment, the, the third season on um, Netflix. And the young the young man who's the, um, the 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 son of one of the the ladies in the show. He has been following this baseball path. So he's been all about the baseball all about that's my path very very driven very kind of forward facing I'm going to be a champ at baseball and that's going to get me into college and know how that kind of that works um over in the US and um, I'm not sure about Canada too but it definitely works like that in the US that sport can be your route into 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 college and um and then suddenly he just fell out of love with the baseball and he, he he's found himself in this place of I don't know what I want to do. And the adults around him are kind of saying, yeah, but you, you need to know. You've got to get a grip of this and you need to let's look at colleges and let's put some to one side. Let's, and it's all very kind of, it all comes with this idea that there's a box that we've got to get ourselves ready for, this box called life. And that box definitely starts way before high school, doesn't it, Wendy? But there is a sense that there's a box and life is box shaped and you've got to get yourself into it and that is well it's just a pack of lies really <laughs> because I've noticed the people who are living these the lives that we all look at and go wow you know look what they've created in the world they were the out of box people the people who probably didn't have a formal education or didn't follow a traditional path that somehow they found their way to something that they love, that has come alive from within them. And they've maybe been encouraged by somebody or they've just been, excuse my friend, sheer blood, they've sheer, had sheer bloody mindedness that they've just kept going and they've been connected to their resilience. And no matter what other people have said about them doing it wrong and that not being the thing to do, they have pursued what they feel like inspired to do they followed that innovative spirit within them and they've come out the other side of that with a life that they really love and I think that's something that I love to help people to do really because not only is there this box created by our own thinking but just like Wendy's pointing out there's a box created by society as well 
whether that's in the education system or in the rest of the world out there, it really does look like there's a way to do life and this is the right way. And if you don't do it the right way, then you're doing it wrong. And that includes, I think, for our young people, it's seeming like we're supposed to know what we're going to do, when we're going to do it, what our career path is going to be at a very, very early age. I don't know what it's like in the US, but over here, but when the children are about 13, they have to choose which, you know, which qualifications, they'll, they'll, which exams they're going to do at 16, so which subjects they'll study till 16. They've got already to start narrowing down what they're learning about. And, and therefore, you know, by dropping some subjects at at 13, you then kind of narrow what you can do. You, there's some jobs you can't. So, for example, if you drop biology at, six, at 13 and you don't do that exam at 16, you're cutting off your opportunity to be a doctor in a way. You, you can, obviously. You can regroup and, and go for that again. You'd have to go off and do some qualifications in biology, but it does start to create restrictions quite early on. Um, and, and move us away from following our in the moment wisdom and our in the moment intuition and you know our own kind of innovation on things our own kind of excitement about life like you said when they are looked like we're super excited new high school students so um yeah it's a while since mine went to high school but I remember battling hard I remember battling hard for my so my children are both academically very capable and it's like school or I had already had a path for them um which was academia so it was well they've done well in the primary system so they have to do certain subjects in secondary which was not for my children it was for the data of the high school <laughs> um and so my my daughter really wanted to do textile she wanted to study fabric and designing things with fabric and sewing and she's actually got a real aptitude for those kind of things and my son wanted to do photography and both times I had to fight tooth and nail to for my children to be allowed to follow their own path their own innovation to follow what they felt passionate about and in fact you know Jack not so much with the photography but Sophie still has an inclination towards doing things like that she's learning crochet at the moment but, you know, she's she's really got this inclination towards those kind of things. And she loves making things, innovating with fabric and, you know, wool and whatever else you can innovate with around around textile. And it was like that wasn't going to be OK for the school until I kicked off. <laughs> I didn't kick off. But I was I stood firm and I said, you're not going to force my children down this academic path that they want to be on. They they don't want to um, do what you're saying they have to do. They want to do these other things. So, um, so, you know, it's there all the time. And we do sometimes have to help our children to to not perhaps be inside the box as much as uh, it looks like they have to be. So I love that window. That was a lovely distraction. I love I love comments that take me off into an expansion of what we're talking about. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, Sophie watches a lot of TikTok, I think, around crochet, but also she's in a cheerleading team. And, and when they're not on, when they're not performing, She's noticed them all doing the crochets that so she wants to join in with that too. And yeah, that space for creativity. And I think creativity and innovation are really closely connected, aren't they? Because really, if we're creating, we're, we're also innovating too, aren't we? We're, we're finding our solutions to things. We, we might start creating something one way and then we're like, oh, well, actually, I want mine to look slightly different. And that's how new stuff can often get created is that we start with, we start with something that somebody else has made, but then we go, oh, well, now I want to make a bag out of crochet that's very similar to, to this bag, but I, I I want it with the longer strap. So we have to work out how to do that, don't we? And so it's always, it, there's so much space for it within, you know, creativity and innovation, I think, really overlap a lot. And they're both, they're both, um, I've already talked about creativity, I think on a live, was it on Thursday I talked about creativity? But they, they do overlap. 
they really do overlap with each other a lot, creativity and innovation. So I can see that quite a few more people have come in, so I'll just say hi to you and welcome to this live where we're exploring um, fostering innovation today. But from a three principles perspective, if you're not familiar with the three principles, then you're in for a treat. Um, I think there's a few people here who've, who've been listening to this content for a while and are really starting to see something helpful in it. So um, if you if you do find this helpful, then please hop along to my profile and, and please follow me. And that way you'll get to find out about all my new things. So each month I have a new course, each month I have a new theme, each month I have a lot of new free tracks. There's absolutely, I'm growing lots and lots of content on here that is really helpful for people who I would say have just tried a lot of other things. Uh, yeah, me too, an awful lot of things and would like to hear something simple and new that is super effective in helping you to reveal your full potential and create a life that's filled with calm and balance and clarity, not stress, anxiety and overwhelm and without any tools, techniques or trawling about in the past. So what you'll notice on these sessions is that I am teaching you an understanding about how the world works and how your experience is created. And it's known as the three principles. If you want to find out a little bit more about that, you can go to my profile. And there is a track called What are the three principles and why do they bring more ease to life? I really do recommend listening to that track. It gives you a really lovely background about this understanding. And then there's a video on the link in bio, um, which is me talking a little bit about me, where I come from. And I was a primary school head teacher. I burnt out in 2015 quite epically and didn't work for a year. I was very poorly. Um, but I've come from there to, to being the queen of climbing and being somebody who helps other people to reveal their true potential. I, I don't think I've revealed mine yet. <laughs> but uh, I see more and more chinks of it every day. Like there's um, a space opening up for the light to come through. And um, that, that's amazing. And I feel better and better every day about myself and about my world, which is um, it's been a very nice place to be. So today we're exploring innovation. So let me know if you're new here, if you're a regular here, if you've come across the three principles before, if you've not come across the three principles before. It's good to know who's in the room. I can see a lot of familiar faces, actually. So say hi if you're a familiar face, too. And you're, we, we, we've, we've now taken to calling people who come here often repeat offenders. Well, I have because it just kind of came out of my mind, mouth one day, you know, when you can't think of a phrase that works. Hello, Violet, lovely to see you. Um, you know, when you can't think of a, the right phrase and then you say something that kind of means the same thing, but not in quite the same way. So I said repeat offenders one day. And so now that's what we are. We are the repeat offenders, people who come here often. The three principles has changed my life in every way, shape and form. It's impacted on every single aspect of my life. I can honestly say it's the most transformational thing I've ever come across. And I've tried quite a few things, to be honest, a lot of things. Um, so I do highly recommend you exploring it. I'm teaching the three principles here on Inside Timer, but there are teachers all over the place on YouTube and and other other places you can go and find out more. If you like listening to me, then please stay on this journey with me. Maybe hop onto the link in my bio and find out more about opportunities to, to work with me. But, you know, stay on this journey with me. If you don't like me, if you don't like the occasional crying and the dodgy humour from Yorkshire in the UK, then, you know, find somebody else, but do learn about the three principles. That's That's something that I cannot express enough um, because it is really really life-changing so we're today we're exploring innovation but this month we're exploring productivity in general i think innovation is a big piece of productivity isn't it because how often do we have an idea an innovation something that is new that is um something you've not come across before something that feels like an exciting solution to something in life that you have or somebody else has and how many times does that get squashed down by our thinking so much of the time 
So hello, Slovenia. Welcome, welcome, and hello. You are one of the repeat offenders. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here again. So this this area of productivity, which I'm ordering, ordering, exploring this month, is um, we'll finish. Uh, is it the end of July on Monday? I do believe it is. Um, we'll finish at the end of July. Um, and then next month, we're going to be exploring relationships. And it's really fun to see how the innovation is working for me on this platform, because what I'm noticing is that just as I'm kind of starting the next year, so the, the, the sort of couple of weeks into this month, I started to notice that relationships were being mentioned quite a lot because I was thinking, I don't know what I want to talk about next month. What shall I talk about in August? Because I. I kind of have a process of, um, you know, by the middle of the month, I need to have kind of decided what the next theme is going to be, because then I start designing the new course. I start creating it. You know, it takes quite a bit of time and effort to do that. And so it's really great to um, to see that that em just emerging from the space. So, you know, it's developing its own organic innovation really because and, and it's all new and that's what we're talking about when we talk about innovation isn't it so my my insight timer strategy is an innovation it's something that i have um that's come to life through me good morning monica lovely to see you and that's exciting for me because as somebody who has been you know trying to grow my business for a long time, do that in inverted commas, <laughs> trying to grow my business for a really long time, and who has been down everybody else's path. So if you're a business owner in the room in the room now, let me know if you've experienced this too. It seems to be there's a lot of people out there telling you the right way to do it. And so I did that for a long time. I thought there's a right way to do this business growing thing, and I'm not doing it right. And so I tried everybody's different way of doing it. And that's another place where innovation gets squashed down is that we look at somebody else's path in life and we go, oh, well, that must be the right way. Because look at them. They've got the car and the money and the house and the number of clients or they appear to have, <laughs> you know. And so we see their Facebook ad that says, oh, how to grow your business in 27 days or, you know, have a million pound business next week or whatever else. And I got caught up in a lot of that, a lot of that. This is the right way to do it kind of stuff. And that really took me away from my own innovative spirit. The What was to come to life through me. And what I love about what's happening on Insight Timer is that I did do a little course on, you know, what to do on Insight Timer, how to connect people and, and you know, how to develop your audience and business and stuff on inside time and, and what can you do to help people and all the stuff like that but my own my the strategy I'm using now just came through me and as I say it had this organic feel to it so the first month I was was April when I kind of did regular lives and, and started to develop um a course and things like that and but it didn't really feel connected the lives were on all sorts of different subjects and the course was a bit vague it, it's, it's a great course it's called calm balance and clarity with ease and it's a really nice introduction to the three principles but it didn't really connect to what I was talking about and then I thought in June it must have been in May I thought you know what actually uh you know I, I can start trying to connect this so then when I came to June I, I started to see actually let's make the theme and the course connect to each other so the course was revealing your full potential with three principles and the theme for June was revealing your full potential so we started to explore that um, good morning from San Diego good morning Maggie hello welcome and then as I was talking about revealing your potential, people started to talk about procrastinating and not being motivated and how could they overcome that? And so July's theme became productivity. 
because it came from me following my innovative spirit because I think that's the other thing that happens as we start to follow this wisdom inside we start to follow the the universal intelligence of what it's guiding us to do it's like all these little spaces I could say spaces in the time space continuum I sound like Star Trek but spaces start to open up and we start to see there's something else over here and there's something else over there and there's like an expansiveness rather than if we're trying to do it somebody else's way we're in this little the box the box that um that Wendy mentioned earlier we end up in the box and we're not um you know we're not able to get out of that because we're following somebody else's rule whereas when we start to innovate it's like there is this beautiful expansive space that we step into and so as i was exploring you know exploring revealing your potential the productivity theme came out that that became this month's theme and then i noticed very early on this month lots of talk about relationships and people not getting on with people and how that was getting in the way of productivity and how people were feeling so that's become the theme for next month and i can honestly say that i have utter faith that the theme for september will just emerge from you know i've got a few things bubbling but i'm going to watch out for what's emerging and what seems to be coming to life in the present moment and that phrase really feels like innovation. What is coming to life in the present moment for you? What feels like your next right step? Not anybody else's, but your next right step. What's alive inside you? And maybe, you know, just pausing sometimes to ask that question that's something to do which is not generally where I point people but when I invite you to do something it's not from a place of needing to fix it's from a place of curiosity what happens if you sit with an aspect of your life and think about innovation and think about what the next that might be from the present moment to solve something that is in your life and really interestingly what's coming to mind is not business we've talked a bit about business today let's talk a bit about personally you know what's coming to mind right now is food and eating and i've had a lot of thinking about food and eating <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that's a flipping understatement quite frankly a lot of thinking about that issue but when I am quieter, when I'm not in this stage of, oh, it's got to look a certain way, I've got to eat these foods to be okay, I've got to, um, you know, I, it's got it's got to be keto or paleo or it's got to be gluten free or it's got to be this free or that free or it's got to have more of this and less of that etc etc when I'm not in that I find myself eating a whole interesting array of foods that perhaps I wouldn't eat ordinarily and I'm, I'm being okay like not not being this reactive body that I thought I had, not being, not feeling poorly, not, you know, not having the reactions to food I thought I would have, not seeing the fluctuations in my weight that I thought I would have by eating too many carbs <laughs> or whatever else it is. But finding that I'm able to eat from this place of intuition and maybe you know, that's innovation too. You know, my, my problem is I want to feel as healthy as possible, if we call that a problem. And maybe if I trust and I listen to my intuition, I'll come up with an innovative way of eating that's unique to me and that works for me and that feels good to my body. And it might change on a daily basis. 
Well, it will. It'll change from mouthful to mouthful, moment to moment. And so what I hope you can hear here is that this innovation is available to us all the time. And that a lot of the time we don't see that because we are caught up in our own habitual thinking about things. And, and also to see that that's human. It really is totally and utterly human for us to experience life like that, to go up and down, to have days when it all seems peachy and other days when it doesn't have days when we feel like we are the most innovative person on the planet and days when we don't. But to know that that spirit of innovation is who we really are. It's our connection to innate intelligence, to the, to the universal intelligence rather. And that it's available to all of us. It's a bit like creativity in a way that you might be sitting there thinking, I'm no innovator. I can't do that. But you can. There are things in the formless that are ready to come to life, to come into form, innovations and new things. And they have to come through someone. They do. Whether that's a new story, you know, even a book is an innovation, isn't it? It's a new story, a new way of looking at something. I sometimes watch films. My fiance and I, he wants to go see the, he wants to see the new Mission Impossible. So we're rapidly ploughing our way through the Mission Impossible films. Um, so that, so that I, because I said, well, I, I think I might have seen one. I don't know if I've seen any more than that. Um, we've now watched the first two. I think there are quite a few. And, um, but, you know, who writes these stories? That is innovation, isn't it? Like seeing how, you know, seeing a story, especially when it's complicated like that, it's quite complicated. Um, I know people say stories have got a formula, but I think it's amazing to see stories coming to life and, and see that that's innovation too. You can't not be innovating, but I think if you're, if you're in a calmer place, you, you have more access to seeing that happening. And um, before I go on to just, yeah, so to please, if you've got a question already bubbling inside you, um, then please do pop that in the comments or you had an insight or you found something useful about this then please do pop that in the comments before I tell you know as I tell this little story and I'll come on to those comments before I finish and also if you found this helpful and you think like me that the three principles is something that could really help a lot of people and you feel like it's helping you then of course I'm I'm super grateful if you're able to make a donation today that does help me to to keep turning up on here and supports my work on Insight Timing which is um, which is something I'm truly passionate about. I'm not going to disappear if I don't get donations, <laughs> but it's always nice. So so yeah, the the story um, I'm going to talk about now is um, I've talked about it a lot in terms of creativity, but I now see that it's part of the innovation piece as well. As I say, they're very close connected. But there's a lovely book called Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. And let me know if you've come across this book. It's an absolutely lovely read. She's the lady that wrote Eat, Pray, Love, which eventually was made into a film with um, Julia Roberts. If you've seen the film, it's lovely. But if you've read the book, it's 10 times more lovely. Julia Roberts is lovely, but the story itself is so much more intricate, intricate than the book. That, sorry, the, the book itself is more intricate than the film. There's a lot more depth to it. And I really do recommend you um, reading that book. But another book by her is called Big Magic. And big, in Big Magic, Elizabeth Gilbert tells the story of how after she'd, um, I think it's after she wrote Eat, Pray, Love, which is part is, is pretty much a true story. After she wrote Eat, Pray, Love, she started, um, she started working on a new book. Um, no title, just she started to, um, she had an idea 
and she started so a lot of her books are quite well researched she does quite a lot of research about the history of, of what she's writing about or the place I mean that's why she wrote Eat Pray Love because she actually did visit those three countries um so she started doing some research about the place where this story is going to be set about the industry she was talking about about everything to do with this book and she got really quite into it and it, you could she could see it taking shape um, but then, unfortunately, she had some personal circumstances that meant that she couldn't focus her attention on the book anymore. And it kind of got sidelined, really. And, you know, after after a while, she went and met up and had a coffee with a, a friend of hers who was also an author. And I think they'd met originally through having the same publisher or something, and they'd become friends, mostly friends via, you know, messages and emails and things. But every so often, they managed to meet up. So they haven't spoken for a little while and they certainly haven't talk, talked in that depth for a little while. And then they came together and they got talking. And as they were talking, the, the lady, the other lady, um, the, the, the girl's friend, started to say, oh, you know, started to talk about this new novel that was about to be released. And as she began to tell the story, Elizabeth Gilbert heard in this lady's story that the story was very, very similar to the one that she had started creating or started exploring prior to her personal circumstances changing and how she talked about that was she said that she felt that this this story this innovation this new thing that was ready to come into form was was kind of bubbling inside her and it was starting to come out and starting to be created and it, and it, it needed to come into form and because it didn't come into form through her. It, it it kind of bubbled up somewhere else, and it bubbled up as it happened inside a friend of hers. And I just thought, I just think that story is worth reading the book Big Magic if you haven't already read it, um, to to hear that story as told by Elizabeth Gilbert. I also love the letter to fear in Elizabeth in that book as well. Absolutely beautiful piece of writing, and and very much. A letter to most of our feelings not just fear <laughs> definitely worth a read for that as well so i see that maggie uh, loves the book too so do recommend that one but isn't it amazing how how that happens that something is ready to come into form and it bubbles up in more than one place at once or in one place and then another and it's just it's just whether we bring it into form we can do that and have a great lot of fun doing it or not but it'll, it'll probably come up somewhere else and I've had that happen to me and I cannot remember what it was about now so <laughs> which is probably good because it probably would still be annoying me but I remember having an idea to do something and not doing it probably because the voice in my head said you can't do that nah, nah, nah. and then seeing another business owner had done it the exact same thing so isn't that interesting to see that these things are just meant to come to life. And another another thing that kind of points to that innovation piece around it, it being ready to come to life is, is when, you know, the arguments about who who was the first, who were the first people to fly, um, you know, whether it was the Wright brothers or there's an argument it was somebody else. And and there's still there's still histor historians like bickering about who 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 which were the first people to fly. Well probably it, it kind of doesn't matter. It was going to happen anyway. I mean, I'm sure it matters to the Wright brothers and their family and the other people who whose names I don't know, even though I suspect the Wright brothers were American, weren't they? And I think the people who were say they were first are actually <laughs> flying from Britain. So I should be I should be finding out who they were. Um, but it, but isn't that interesting how it just bubbled up at the same time in, in you know, the, the, the understanding the principles because flight is like, our human experience it's created by our principles um and that happened at the same time like the, the understanding people needed to to bring that to life all kind of bubbled up in more than one place and that was after you know if you've ever watched those videos of people uh, trying to fly and and ending up uh, <laughs> ending up falling off ramps and all sorts of things um there's a lot of those about if you look them up on youtube that had been happening for a long time before the final pieces fell into place for that innovation to happen. So I've really enjoyed it today. I hope you have too. 
I think it's a yeah. It was It's not quite gone in the direction I thought it would go in. But I hope I hope you found that helpful. I hope you can see that this innovative energy is available to you too. And what are you squashing down? Not not that you're doing it. Not that you're doing anything wrong. But what is it? that is ready to come alive through you that you're not doing? And what if that could change the world? What if that has the potential to, to move the human race in a different direction? Because there are things happening all the time that are doing that. You know, right back to the beginning when we talked about AI, it's happening all the time, isn't it? So why, why shouldn't it be you? There's another piece of your potential that can be revealed when you start to look in this direction. You start to notice that you've got some thinking that is stopping you. It creates a feeling, it blocks you, you feel anxious, you feel stuck. But then that's not the truth of who you are. And we all have this potential for innovation. Every single one of us. So let's tell you a little bit more about what's happening this week. And I've just noticed actually that I haven't actually written them all down. Um, because I am going live um, every day this week. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my um, Insight Timer app up. Oh, it's there already. And if I look at my profile, it'll tell you um, my events this week. So uh, tomorrow, the 25th of um, the 25th of July um, at 3.33 p.m. for Fonzies, um, powered by Calm with the three principles. So something a little bit different, but definitely still around productivity. You know, how can we be powered by Calm when it looks like life says you need to be powered by stress, anxiety and overwhelm? But we're going to talk about that tomorrow. Um, the 26th is at... Oh, Flying back with the board. So the 26th, which must be Wednesday, um, overcoming overwhelm with the three principles. Overwhelm is often something that gets in the way of our ability to move forward in life, doesn't it? The 27th is 8.05 a.m. So these are all BST time. So they will be working for some people and not for others. But remember, there's a link in my bio where you can go and watch the catch up. And there will be a little track that will come live in the next few weeks, pointing you in the same direction with the same content, um, just a shorter version. And then on Friday, the 28th at 1.11pm, I've scheduled it right. I don't know if anybody else came across the one that was at 1.11am where I scheduled it wrong. Empowering resilience and self-compassion in the three principles way. And that's really around the fact that, you know, we really can get knocked back, can't we, when we're, you know, when, when we're going through life and if we connect to uh, resilience more we can experience um we can move forward more in life and not be quite so knocked back so that's what's happening the rest of this week as you already know there is a course stress the success of three principles approach to effortless productivity um and two other courses available and if you found this content not at all helpful then um i'll be really grateful if you're able to make a donation yes so marina galan is lovely She's a, I don't know why, but your comments keep appearing and disappearing again. I'm not sure why that's happening. And they're there and then they're gone and then they're, there, and then they're gone again. So that's really strange. I can only see where you've done spelling corrections now. I can't see the original. But is it happening for you as well, Sue? That is really strange. Um, so Marina Galan is lovely, yeah. And then there's lots of other people you can listen to on the um, on, on three principles and they're all lovely. I listen to lots of different teachers and I really do think that um, it's this com the combination for me of courses and um, conversation, I call it. So listen, you know, just listen to stuff. Notice what appeals, notice what doesn't, notice what when you have insights, it, it doesn't matter. Listen to lots of different teachers. But do look towards conversations in this subject. That might be that you and a friend get together and chat about it. Because I do think there's something magical happens when you teach it to someone else or when you have a conversation with somebody else. So I think both are, are really um, 
yeah, the learning piece and the conversation piece work together to help you to really deepen your understanding of these three principles. So thank you so much for being here today. It's been an absolute joy. As I say, I hope to see um, a few more of you later on in the week. That'll be really great. I love them. I love being here. I love being on Inside Time. And thank you so much for all your support and, and all your love today. So take care. I hopefully will see you on a lawn later this week or catch up with me on one of the courses. I'm, I'm really enjoying the opportunity to have conversations with people on the courses, which I can do a little bit more fluidly there because people can leave a comment and I can do a little audio response, which is a great way to start communicating. And also the group, I've not mentioned it today, the group is now called Powered by Calm. Um, so please do join me in the group have a look at that on my profile too um i'm hoping to get that going a little bit more i'd like to interact with people a little bit more and i think a group's a great place to do that so thank you anami it took me a while and a little bit of thinking but i once i left the thinking to one side powered by calm made sense which i came up with because i was driving through leeds one day and there was a beer company and um their their motto was powered by powered by beer and i thought you know on the side of the van it said powered by and i said the brand of the beer but powered by beer <laughs> and i thought well, that's what i help people to do i help them to be powered by calm how amazing thank you so much anami thank you for saying that um so yeah my presence here and my shared nuggets of wisdom thank you so much i learned from all of you too so lots of love everyone and hopefully i'll see you again later in the week